and gentlemen, the best act in her price range. Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers, ladies and gentlemen. The Late Show, starring Joan Rivers. Miss Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers. She's made the world laugh for decades. And now with her reality show, Joan and Melissa, and a new hit digital show filmed in her bedroom, she's still number one. I sat down with Joan to discuss her new projects and the business of comedy. Yeah. I was a little worried today <laughs> because I knew I had the queen of fashion police coming on. Yes, and you look Did perfect. Did I do okay? You look like you have come off <laughs> the plane from England, which okay. is a huge compliment. <laughs> hey, I'll take it. Yeah. So you have fashion police, but you also have a new show. Yeah, I have fashion police. I have Joan and Melissa, uh, a reality show, and then we just started on the internet in bedwithjoan.com, and that just is sailing now. Welcome to the first chapter in, I hope, a long series of In Bed With Joan. And why am I doing the internet? I am doing the internet because I think it is better than television. On television, you could say F but on the internet, you can do it. <laughs> That's exploded its number. Yes. Number six on the internet. Yeah. Okay, number six Amazing. on the internet. You have 1.6 million Twitter followers. Yeah, isn't that great? And that's a big reason, obviously, because all of those people are tuning into the show. Yeah, and I, lo and I worry about my Twitter. I make sure something funny goes up all the time and comments, and I read a lot of them, you know. Yeah, I'm very aware of what's going on. So the theme of this show is that you're visiting your daughter and your grandson, Cooper. You're talking about re the reality show? Yes. Because we've got three shows, yeah. And well, I'm Joan talking about Melissa. In Bed. Oh, no, no, no. In Bed is just me in my stupid room that Melissa's in the reality show, Joan and Melissa. Melissa, I live in her guest room, which is very tiny. And I kept saying, oh, this is horrible. It's a hovel. It's this and it's that. And uh, then I started saying, I might as well do a re another show out of here. So I do my now in bed with Joan from the bed in the reality show. I was told that you died like 10 years ago and that you're totally <laughs> animatronic. Like this isn't, like I don't know who's working this, but it's amazing. I'm right up close. <laughs> you have these guests that come out of the closet, as you say. Come out of the closet. It's California. So I always say, who's in the closet tonight? It's going to come out. And then out they come. Who are some of these guests? Oh my God, wait, I brought my list because look already in, in, in two, three weeks. Uh, my God, Belinda Carlisle, Sarah Silverman, Nick Kroll. Uh, my God, uh, uh, my God, Chris Harrelson, uh, Anthony Jeselnik, Jim Rash, Margaret Cho, Jim Ross. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Cato Kalin, Billy Eichner. It's just, it's an amazing list. Amazing. And so this show can go on for 25 minutes or however long. Yeah, we, we, what we do is they get in bed and most of them are comedians or comics. And we just, it's the internet, you can say what you want, you know, and there's nobody saying, you can't say that. And we just talk until we figure that's enough. And it's been so much fun for me, because nothing like getting a good shot, it's like playing tennis with someone, you know, when you get someone yeah. on your level comedically and you get each other, they've been heaven. It's, I, I look forward to the show. You have your daughter Yes. who's really a great sidekick for you. Yeah, she's um, great. And, and, and a great executive producer. My friends are not here for you to hijack and have as guests on your show. The point is, you were a wonderful interview. Thank Joe you. is a wonderful interview, and I thank you so much. Yeah, and you're a wonderful producer. Thanks. Executive producer, thank you so much. Good she does one. Fashion Police. And, and Number what, one on the E! Network. How about that and, one? And see now, congratulations on that. And, and what's fascinating to me about it is it's almost like family succession planning. It's just wonderful that the family that were involved. Are you single or married? I'm single. You're single. When you get married, it's good to be involved with your wife in something because you'll always have something to talk about. It's like a third, you have a common interest. So Melissa and I, my God, besides Cooper, my grandson, she's the executive producer on Fashion Police. She's on the reality show with me. She's uh, the executive producer again on the internet show. So there's always something to fight about. Was she groomed for that? No, I would have liked to have been a lawyer or something. No, you don't. <laughs> nev you never want a child to go into th this business. You didn't never. want her. So you, you didn't see her heading in that direction? No, never. She was a uh, history major from the University of Pennsylvania with high honors, graduated with high honors. Uh, my husband and I thought she'll go into politics or she'll go into 
law we never, and she turned to us when she graduated, hadn't been in the school plays, nothing, and said, I want to be in show business. I want to, I want to do an internship. And she went off and did an internship at NBC. How about that? And From nowhere. Well, I mean, you know, you got your education as well. And yeah. I, I think that uh, on this show, I found that education and entertainment are inextricably tied. It really helps you if you come in with that background. Oh, well, I don't think it's even education so much. I think it's, you have to be, very, the ones that last are the smart ones. You can't be stupid and last unless you have a very smart manager that you're listening to. Somebody's got to be very smart behind, or the person themselves, behind any successful performer. And now you're getting uh, this time with your grandson, yeah, Cooper, who's 12 great. years old. Yeah. Do you see him getting involved? Because he's funny. Well, he is a he's very handsome. He got like the best of her and her husband, <laughs> you know? Again, you're saying, when you have a child, the first thing you look at, you go, oh, she's got my thighs. You know, you see, oh, oh, she's got my grandmother's nose, you know? But uh, he got the best, but he doesn't like it. I mean, he's fine on the inter he's fine on reality show, but he doesn't want to be, which is interesting because he's so cute. Why? Why not? I don't. He doesn't care, and he wants to be a lacrosse player. That's, okay. You look. Oh, that's what we're sending you to private school for. Do you expect that to change? I hope it changes again, but not to go into our business is very hard. I have so many friends that. Um, extraordinarily talented that just it hasn't happened it's before. still hard for you it's oh I'm still in the trenches what is the hardest part uh, getting on the air absolutely getting on the air having them live and as you get older it's a nightmare because it's all you know that it's all about youth 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 I mean Joan and Melissa the reality show uh, we got the highest ratings they ever got on we and they called up and they said well we're a little soft in the demographic. And you go, oh, <laughs> you know, calm down here. Now, because of fashion beliefs, I'm getting tremendously young viewers, really young. I look at my concerts, and they're 19 and 20 and 22 and 25. And uh, so everyone's very happy. And I think, look who's, look who's come to see me. Nobody, not one woman in my audience ever has a tampon in her purse. <laughs> and how... How, why is this happening? Because you're reaching a younger demographic. You call yourself the queen of the gays. The queen you, of the gays. Have, no question about it. You should be wearing a hat. And, yeah. and what is it that is drawing these groups to I don't you? know. A long time ago, a mafia friend of mine said, don't look to the right, don't look to the left, run your own race. And it was a great piece of advice. So I don't know why they're coming to see me. I guess maybe because I'm, I'm very, I live in the moment. But is part of the key to your success also the fact that you've never let go of stand-up, that well, you're at your core, I love you're a comedian? Every time in New York, I work at a little place that holds 100 people. I go in, I do it for no money. I give the money to charity, the $3 you get from the six drunks that are watching. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I love comedy. I love stand-up. I love the connection. with, And you can say anything in stand-up. And when they're your friends, you can say something terrible. And then you all laugh together. I did the Comedy Central roast, okay? It was this, they said such mean, disgusting filth. They called me a whore and a c and this and that. I kept thinking, how do they know me? It is just... Well, you, you laugh at yourself as well, but, but you can be brutal. Yeah. I mean, you've done a lot with Howard Stern, who is just unrelenting I love uh, at times. Joan Rivers, a lot of things to promote as usual, I'm sure. Have you ever gone too far, do you think? Probably. And have you ever felt like, oh, I should probably apologize? No. Um, yes, sometimes you feel maybe, but comedy is just to make people laugh and be silly and have fun. And I'm so politically incorrect. And what I love in my act is uh, when I start to get a little politically incorrect, and, like some pocket will go, <gasps> you know what I mean? Uh, I'll say, wait, we're going to, no, wait, wait till you hear what we're going to say about this one or that one or, you know, because if you, it goes back to Lenny Bruce, who I was lucky enough, I was just starting the village and he was at his height across the street from where I, so I saw him very often. He and Richard Pryor were the two that just went for it. Yeah. And that was, that's where comedy should be. But there's a certain nuance in how you tell the joke, right? Because one person could say the same joke and get 
banned for life. Oh, for and then for the life. other person, it's just on to the next show. But again, it's uh, leave them alone. Poor, uh, what's his name? Z uh, Godfrey, uh, Gilbert Godfrey did some stupid tsunami joke and lost a million dollar Affleck commercial. He was a duck. You know. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was saying the tsunami is terrible, but the country never looked cleaner. You know? <laughs> Find the good part. And, uh, and uh, it, it's a shame. Comedy is just supposed to be funny. Everybody calm down. Too much, and I won't tell you my Whitney Houston joke. And, uh... You are a business. Yeah, I'm an industry. In, my manager says, you're an industry. I'm an industry. You're an industry. Uh, you're on top of your game. You came in here. You knew exactly what you wanted yeah. with, with the lighting, all the shots, everything. You've been in business with QVC for 20 years. 23 years saved my life. I w you know, you got to take shots. I went into QVC before anyone wanted to do it. And it was like dead celebrities, maybe a couple of ones they propped, like Carol Channing, but most of them were like, you know, they were working their mouths. And uh, I just said, it's television. It's going to reach a million people when you show a ring or you show something. You know, I mean, this will, I didn't mean that way, but when you show this ring. It, so um, I went into it and it became, a, it's been amazing. I have 18 people working for me, Joan Rivers, and uh, we do clothing. We do, I just did it last night. I'm going back again on Monday. And that, that is a skill. I mean, you have to be able to sell on camera. You have to, A, be able to sell on camera. Fast. But more than that, you have to have good product. Never underestimate your customer. Are you really involved with that oh. in terms of, of oh. making sure that you have the right partners and everything? Oh, I, not one piece in 22 years have I picked up and shown on camera that I haven't absolutely had a hand in. But you haven't worn yourself. And now the, all of this is All yours. of this is mine. This is, it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, that's a, but um, like this, we had, we must have done five different butterfly pins before we picked this. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. I like it. it. But what I'm saying, you know, um, I, I always said the first time they'll buy because it's my name. Second time they'll buy because they liked it. And I knew that from the beginning. And I watched the other performers come on QVC and they all think, well, I'll just go out. And I can sell them anything. No, you can't. And it's not what you sell, you know. It's you, you have to see your returns. Then right. you know. I mean, it's a business. And sometimes it's millions of dollars in a couple minutes. Oh, and it's, uh, we had one jacket just recently that I adored, loved the print, big prints of very end, and it didn't sell well. And you want to go, you, you know, okay, what do we do now? Because we've got a million dollars worth of floral jackets here. <laughs> so what do you do? Well, we were too early. Again, okay. it's, uh, we brought it back when it was, I sold it the first time during a snowstorm. Stupid, but it had been ordered, you know. Uh, now we sold it, and now it's spring, and everyone's going, that's a pretty jacket. Mm -hmm. So I was lucky enough to have a second shot at it, thank God, because it's a great jacket. And you have your own production company. Yeah. Uh, Melissa runs that. I'm not, good at, I'm not good at that kind of business. It bores me. You know, they'll write, they'll give me a contract to read, and I'll write true in the margin. <laughs> 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 what are your comments? I don't care. But uh, my husband was great at that. We were a terrific team. My husband did all, he used to say, you be funny, don't worry. And um, he did all that. But I run the production company and I try to keep on top of it. That's why, we're on, that's why I'm going now into uh, much more into the internet because I think that's the future. Do you think that you would be, you would have been as successful if you hadn't changed your name? Oh, Cause yes. Because your name was Malinsky. Joe Malinsky, Joe. Now it would be right in, oh, now it would be fabulous. But at the time? At the time, you had to change your name. You had to have a catchy name. You had to have a name. This goes back to 1966. And my agent was a man named Tony Rivers. And he kept saying, you can't be Joan Malinsky. <laughs> so I said, I'll be Joan Rivers. He never booked me again. He got so nervous. And Melissa changed her name as well. Well, yes, but that I get. That I get. I mean, that we're, we're already rivers. Yeah, so right. So it's stupid. Uh, you have a regular life just like everyone else. You have tragedies. Uh, yeah. You can become depressed. But everyone expects you to be funny all the time. And I'm sure you've been asked this before, but I've never heard your answer. No. Uh, is that hard? Uh, it's hard. Again, going way back, Bill Cosby once said to me, way back when, because we both hit, he hit a little ahead of me, we had the same. And he used to give me like advice. 
And he said to me, you leave your house, it's PR. And so I will have just heard my best friend died and I'm walking through an airport. How do you do that? Because it's, it's, it's just what you have to do. Then you go inside and then the truth comes out. Uh, I just think they want to see you funny. They meet you once, they want to see you funny, they want to see you accessible, and that's the yeah. right. That's, part, that's the business. I can remember being at a, uh, some kind of tech, tech show, personal te technology show, and seeing Sinbad. And I walked up to him and I said, what are you doing here? And he looked at me like he was like, dude, I'm looking at technology. Like right. he was mad. Well, Sinbad A has no right to be mad. <laughs> he should be lucky anybody walks over to him. Okay. Yeah, so, he's not big enough to be so mad. So you recognize the blessing of oh my the brand. God. Let me tell you, I hit on the Carson Show in 1966. And since then, including you guys, a limo has been sent for me. <laughs> and every time I get in front of the car, today I say to my doorman, are they watching? I'm getting in the limo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to be grateful. And, and all of the years of experience has really rubbed off. Uh, there's the rapper MC Light. I asked her, what's the best piece of business advice she's ever gotten in her career? And it came from you. You told her, don't ever let another soul write a check for you. You're damn right. You're damn right. Keep, take control of your money. And they can reach you anywhere in the world. There's no such excuse. Well, we couldn't reach you, so we had to write the check. And pretend you know what you're looking at when you go to your accountant. <laughs> pretend. <laughs> never let them know. I don't know what you're talking about here. I have a wonderful accountant, Michael Carlin, and for 28 years I say, are you sure, Michael? I, I, let's get back to point four. <laughs> <laughs> what is the best advice that, you can, that you've heard and who gave it to you uh, for business-wise? Probably sign your own checks. That was my husband. He always said never, ever give away your power of attorney. Never. And try to have three people have a lawyer and your manager look as well as you. Never just trust one person. Get a, another pair of eyes. What about branding-wise? What can you tell our audience? Because so many of our people are young people who want to be brands themselves. How do you do it? Just do it. I know it sounds... Do, well, my best advice, which I do, go through any door. I never want to hear, that's not what I do. How do you know? QVC, when they came to me and said, do you want to do jewelry? I had my, a talk show going on CBS at that point. I said, sure. You know what I mean? I'll take a shot. Never say no. Can you ice skate? Oh, can I ice skate? Of course, I'll try it. You know, try everything because you don't know where it's going to end. And of course, you're trying digital now. Yeah, I love uh, it. With your love show, it's it. a hit. Uh, people can go from this show to that right show. Right now, Joan Rivers, uh, in bed with Joan com. And ultimately, you probably want to sell this, right? Uh, ultimately, I'd love to sell. I want to do my own network. Want your own show? We'll talk to you. I want to do my own my own channel, which we're starting now, and uh, I'll do. Of course, love to sell it. I just think it's so exciting. Well, your own channel would be uh, amazing. Yeah. It, it was hard for Oprah. It's been hard. Very have, hard. Have you have you watched her as she, her growing pains? I think again, Oprah, because it happened and became she became so big, she didn't realize they're watching you. They're not watching. Your right. All I of think these it other came, shows. So, it came as a shock to her mm -hmm. that, oh, it's just me, you know, because everyone, you can't have yes people around you. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Somebody's got to say, Oprah, that's stupid, you know? <laughs> and who's going to say that? Maybe Gail. Who says that to you? Oh, <laughs> where do you start? <laughs> My agent, five weeks ago, I called up and I said, I really think it's time. Uh, we should part company. And you know what he said on the other end? What? Goodbye. <laughs> Keeps you humble. Keeps you humble. And that's the key to your success. It's the key to everything. Staying humble, elegant, and always funny. Save this when you go on a date with somebody really good. Thank you. Or you meet the Queen of England. <laughs> You're actually one of the few people that were invited to Charles's wedding. Charles's one of the four wedding. Americans. So you know all about yeah, that. Yeah, I love them. All right. Thank you so much, A Joan pleasure Rivers. Again. Thank you, thank you. And with Joan Rivers, I'm Lee Hawkins. We'll see you next time. When you get your show, enjoy your show and be grateful. Never think you deserve it or that you're better than your guests. Well, that was an anti Semitic joke. If anything, it's an anti Nazi German joke. So already the wrong group got angry. <laughs>